the previous part we have discussed what happens when the cells are placed in hypo and hypertonic solutions now in this part we will take up isotonic solutions and then we will talk of the applications or various processes where osmosis is taking place and that helps in various activities or processes to take place so here we are talking of isotonic solutions now whenever we use the word hypo and hyper it is more and less isotonic means two solutions which are separated by a semi permeable membrane have same concentration so if we take this situation compartment a and b have the same concentration then what is going to happen again let us take an example here 1000 water molecules 1000 water molecules here 100 salt molecules here also 100 salt that means in case of these two compartments the concentration is set of solute so how many free solvent here there are 900 free here also there are 900 free that means the concentration of two is exactly same whether we talk in terms of solvent because of our definition of osmosis is the movement of water takes place from the region of its higher to its lower here is also 900 free molecule here also we are showing 900 that means in both the compartments solvent concentration is same in case of solution also nothing is more concentrated or less concentrated so such solutions are called isotonic what is going to happen in this situation in this situation water molecules are going to move from one place to another but the number is going to be same so if one molecule goes from a to b one is going to come from b to a that means the concentration is going to remain same and this is what when we use the word that there is no net movement in this case there is no net movement of the solvent particles net movement would result into change in concentration so there is movement of particle but that is in equal proportion and because of this equal movement there is no net change in the solvent concentration of these compartments we have to talk about two solutions which are isotonic to our cellular content this is a very very important thing the numbers we have to remember 0.9% sodium chloride solution and 5% glucose solution these two solutions are isotonic they are isotonic to our cellular content that means what is going to happen if a cell is placed in any of these two solutions let us take this animal cell and here it is an isotonic solution so it could be 0.9% nacl or it could be 5% glucose solution in this case what is going to happen in this case again the movement will take place that means if one particle one water molecule is going in one will come out that means there is no net movement of water molecule so nothing will happen to the cell no change it is not going to get turgid and nor is it going to get flaccid so no change it is going to remain as it is these two numbers are very important and the questions which are asked are keeping these numbers safe but they're going to change something let us take couple of examples if we say that uh, what is going to happen if an animal cell is placed in 9% sodium chloride solution 0.9 is isotonic so 9 will become hypertonic so if we place animal cell in hypertonic we know what happens water moves from hypo to hyper so exosmosis will take place number is same 
but instead of 0.9 the question says 9 percent let us take this one if the question says what is going to happen if a cell is placed in 0.5 percent glucose solution 5 percent is isotonic so 0.5 percent will become hypotonic water will move from hypo to hyper so numbers are going to remain the same but the decimal position can change and even the name of the substance can change. It can be 5% NaCl or 0.9% glucose. So these two numbers we have to remember very carefully that these are isotonic to our cellular content. Now let us take certain applications where this osmosis or this process is important. Number one. Opening and closing of stomata. If you remember, guard cells, they take potassium ions. So when potassium ion goes into the guard cell, the concentration of solute increases. Or in other words, we can say it becomes hypertonic. So water from the subsidiary cells, which are hypo now, move into the hypertonic. That is hypo to hyper. Guard cells will become turgid and stomata would open. So this is the process which helps in opening and closing of stomata. If uh, you are able to recall the movement which is seen in Mimosa pudica, touch me not plant. The leaves, they collapse like this whenever the leaf receives a stimulus of touch. At the leaf base, there is a swollen structure which we call pulvinus. The leaves are stretched like this. As soon as there is a stimulus, this stimulus travels up to the pulvinus and the inner cells of the pulvinus, they undergo exosmosis. That means water moves out. And when water moves out, the cells here, they become flaccid and that is how the two leaves, they come closer. So next thing where osmosis works is movement of leaves in mimosa pudica that is touch me not plant. Another uh, application of osmosis we have heard of the process of germination of seed. The first step is imbibition where the water gets adsorbed on the surface. Because of this imbibition, the seed coat cracks and after that the water goes in and unless and until this water goes in, seed is not going to germinate. So it is essential for this germination of seed. So here also this osmosis is important. Other than this movement of water, transport of water, uh, water is absorbed uh, by root hair and then one cortex cell to the next to the next up to the xylem. So that is also by the process of osmosis. That is absorption of water by root hair and its transport up to cortex. This also is by osmosis and here uh, we are not going to get into details of this because here apoplast and symplast movements are also important but water is going to move from one cell to another by the same thing from hypo to hyper and ultimately it reaches up to the xylem. Now in our daily life also, we have this uh, osmosis and its application. One simple thing is when we make pickles and jams. In pickles, little extra salt is added and in jams, little extra sugar is added. This extra salt and sugar acts as a preservative. This is what we have heard of. We already know about it. But what exactly happens when we are adding little extra salt or sugar into that uh, pickle and jam? Suppose this is our container and we make this jam and pickle once in a year. And this lasts for the entire year. Say so this is our jam and we have added little extra sugar. 
That means because of the sugar, it has become hypertonic. Or same as the case uh, when we add little extra salt in pickles. So we have created hypertonic condition. Now when a fungal spore comes and falls on it, because fungus can grow on it, bacteria can spoil it, so the spores come and fall on this. So what would be the concentration and spore if we have created hyper here? This will be hypo. That means water is going to move from the spore into the outer part. That means the spore is going to get dehydrated. And if spore gets dehydrated, it will not be able to germinate on our jam or pickles. And that is why we have to be extra cautious. There should not be extra water in jam or pickle. While we take the stuff out of the bottle, that time also we have to be cautious that we are not using a wet spoon. Because if water content increases, this hypertonic condition would be lost. And then there are chances of the fungus growing on this jam or pickles. So this is the you know everyday application of osmosis we keep doing it without realizing that this is actually osmosis that is helping us so we have understood everything about osmosis its definitions what happens to cells when they are placed in hypo hypertonic conditions we have also seen isotonic solution and the applications of osmosis now in the next part, we will take up the other two processes of passive transport that is diffusion and facilitated diffusion.